Hello. We hope you've all had a really good Easter. Um, we're looking forward to sharing with you this morning in your homes. Yes, and to start we're going to have a quick game called Do You Believe It? I'm going to read um, a statement and would like you to guess whether or not you think it is true or false so you can play um, as a family. Statement number one. Lightning never strikes in the same place twice. Is that true or false? The answer is false. It actually strikes in the same place quite a lot, whatever that means, Google. And the Empire State Building gets struck over a hundred times a year, apparently. Statement number two. If you cry in space, the tears just stick to your face. Is that true or false? It's true. Statement number three. Humans can distinguish, they can tell the difference between over a trillion different smells. That's a big number. True or false, a trillion different smells. It's true. Statement number four. Adults have uh, fewer bones than babies do. Fewer bones. It is true. Goldfish only have a memory of Three seconds. Is that true or false? It's a well-known saying. It is actually false. And last one. The average person, now I was thinking of Deborah Cornest when I saw this one. The average person swallows four spiders in their sleep every year. Is that true or false? You'd be pleased to know it's actually false. It could be more or less, <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> How would you measure that anyway? So we've just had that game um, about tr what's true and what's false. I uh, hope you did better than me, I really didn't do very well. But today we are also looking at about what we believe in. What do we believe? What's true, what's false? So just remembering that we've just celebrated Easter, we have remembered Jesus dying on the cross for us, we have celebrated that he has risen from the dead. And now today we're going to look at a passage um, for what the disciples were going through just a few days after he rose from the dead. Let's see what the disciples were, were going through. Now this morning Helena and Laria very thankfully are doing our reading for us, so we hand them over to them. Today's reading is taken from John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 31. Jesus appears to Thomas. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord! But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs, in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. Thank you very much, Helena and Laria. Um, we now have some questions that you can ask amongst your families uh, regarding that passage. Now, hopefully you've had a bit of a chat about those questions and had some good discussion. Now, poor Thomas, he gets a bit of a bad name being called Doubting Thomas. 
Um, but the other disciples had already seen Jesus alive. So really, he was just looking for the same confirmation that they had. Jesus did many miracles when he was on the earth and people saw um, these things with their eyes. And we have it recorded in the Bible that we can read about today. And Jesus still does miracles today. And it's really good for us to talk about answered prayer, about healings, about the wonders of God, because it increases our faith, it builds our faith. So clearly, Jesus wasn't talking about having our eyes shut. He wasn't saying that we need to follow him and not, not see anything. Um, but he's saying, don't let what you see be the foundation of your trust in me. He was saying, blessed are those who believe without seeing. So he's asking us to trust him and to believe in him, um, not based on our experience of what we see, but having faith first. We see in this passage that Thomas wanted to touch Jesus' wounds before he believed. I wonder how many of us have said, oh, if only I saw a miracle, then I'd really believe. But Jesus wasn't angry at Thomas. He had compassion and revealed himself, letting him touch his hands and side. He's gracious because he wants us to know him. So Jesus isn't angry, but in the same conversation, he tells Thomas to stop doubting and believe. He says, blessed are those who believe without seeing me, because that's the kind of faith that he wants us to have. You see, our faith is quite like a building. And the most important part of a building is, do you have any ideas? It's the foundation. The foundation of the building is the most important. Do you remember when Jesus told the story about um, the man who builds his house on sand and the man who builds his house on rock? And then what happens when a storm comes? The man who builds his house on sand, the storm comes and it destroys the house. But the man who built his house on a rock, the storm comes and the house is still steady. So the most important part of the house, therefore, is the foundation. The most important part of your faith is the foundation. Now, when we see this passage, I think that there are two different foundations for our faith that we can see. One of them is seeing, and the other one is believing. Now, seeing is like the sand, but believing is like the rock. The foundation of your faith is strongest if you can say with all your heart, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I don't need to see you in order to believe. If you can say that and mean it, then Jesus will bless you because he says, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. OK, you can pause the video now and as a family, reread verses 30 to 31 and have a discussion around how we can be sure about what we believe. So you may have now just read in the verses that we can be sure of what we believe because they have been written down for us and they've been written down by people who were there, who witnessed these events, who saw Jesus himself. And so John writes these words saying, I've written these words so that you can believe and that when you believe, you have life. And this is the amazing truth of Jesus Christ. This is what God's done for us, that when we believe that Jesus is who he says he is, the Son of God, the King, and that we believe in what the Bible says that he's done for us, he's died for us, he's risen from the dead, and we believe what the Bible says he will do, that he will return. When we believe in these things, we have life. The fullness of life now, today, and eternal life forever.
This is the good news that God has given us through Jesus. So with that, let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust you, that we can trust your word, that you've revealed yourself to us through your son Jesus and by the word of God. And I pray that our hearts will be softened and open to you to hear your truth, to believe your words to us and to obey your commands to us. So would you help us to follow you? We want to love you and serve you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Bye. Bye. Messiah, the Son of God.